Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In my opinion, the field of radio frequency electronics is pure black magic. And in today's video, I will show you some experiments that make me say this. Let's start with a crystal radio. Did you know that you can make a radio that can pick up stations without having it connected to any source of external power? This one has no batteries and it is not connected to the mains and it allows you to listen to some stations using headphones. In my case, to make the stations audible in this video, I decided to connect it to a guitar amplifier, so this is cheating in a way. However, it works just fine with headphones. And here it is. It can also be tuned. And here is the other local station that I can pick up. The main component of this radio is this loop antenna, which acts as an inductor and as an antenna at the same time. And it's made out of 17 turns, wound on a plywood frame. The length from here to here is 31 centimeters. There is a 4 millimeter space between the turns. And for the wire I used some Leeds wire, which basically means that this is not a solid piece of copper, but is made of several very fine copper strands. And the antenna is connected in parallel to this tuning capacitor, which is a variable capacitor that I got out of a radio. One side of this parallel tank is connected to ground, which is really important for decent performance out of a set like this. And the other terminal of the tank is connected to a germanium diode. Germanium diodes are pretty special because they are very fast, which is really important in this type of application. And they also have a much lower voltage drop with respect to silicon diodes. So these have a typical voltage drop of around 200 millivolts, whereas silicon diodes have a voltage drop of around 650 millivolts at room temperature. And since this radio picks up medium wave stations, the diode needs to switch fast enough so that it works at around 1 MHz. And unfortunately, germanium diodes are not around anymore, so you have to find an old one if you want to build something like this at home. In this case, the germanium diode acts as a radio detector, which is basically a rectifier. So by rectifying an AM signal, the output of the rectifier is the envelope of the RF signal. And in the case of AM stations, the envelope of the signal is actually the audio signal that needs to go to the headphones or to the audio amplifier. As I said, there are no amplifiers or external power sources here, which means that we are working with extremely low powers. And this means that we cannot use any headphones for such a set. So the headphones are pretty special. The headphones that I'm using are some old 50s military headphones and they are 2.2 kilo ohms per channel and I'm using them in series which means that their impedance is around 4.4 kilo ohms. For comparison, modern headphones are usually 32 ohms per channel. So these have a much higher impedance which means that they will load the circuit a lot less than modern headphones. And here's the schematic for the whole thing. Basically, this is the tank circuit. Here we have an AM signal which looks something like this. And after the detector diode, we get just the envelope of this AM signal, which is the audio signal. Okay, so let's see how these signals look like on the oscilloscope. So on channel 1, the yellow one, we have the RF signal. And on channel 2, which is the violet one, we have the audio signal. The signals are pretty low. So it's hard to figure out what's going on, but you can see that the second channel is more or less the envelope of the first one. And by zooming in and changing the time base, we can see that the yellow channel is actually a sine wave. Now, believe it or not, a radio like this one is more than just a hobby project. These sort of radios were actually built during the Second World War so that the soldiers could listen to the radio in remote places. And I can only assume that they were useful and convenient during the war since they didn't need any external power. 
However, listening to the radio is not such a big deal, so I was wondering if I could harvest this energy and use it for something else. And a typical challenge for something like this is to try to turn on an LED. So let's see what sort of voltages do we get here. To do this, I remove the guitar amplifier and the headphones and I replace them with a capacitor. This one is an 820 nanofarad capacitor. Let's see what sort of voltage we get here. Let's see if this is tuned. So by tuning it, we get around 600 millivolts. Which means that this is not enough to turn on an LED. I did my best to make this experiment work. So I chose a red LED which has the lowest voltage drop. Here it is. And I connected it to the radio. As you can see, we get absolutely nothing. However, I think we can use an old trick to make an LED work. I replaced the capacitor with a larger one. This is a 47 microfarad capacitor. I let it charge and my plan is to make an LED light up using a jewel thief. So here it is. Let's try it out. Yes, it works. I'm not sure if you could see this on video, but we had a brief flash from the LED. Of course, it cannot turn the LED on continuously because the power is too low, but if you let the capacitor charge up, it can actually light up the LED for a brief moment. So let's try it once again. 3, 2, 1, now. I hope you saw that on video. The Joule Thief is basically a step-up converter that's based on a blocking oscillator. I built mine using a choke that came out of a power supply. This used to be the mains input filter. To be honest, I'm still not happy with the result, so I was wondering if there is some other trick to increase the voltage. And this is what I came up with. This is basically a voltage doubler. So far, we only had this section of the circuit, which is a single wave rectifier, which rectifies the positive half wave. However, we can add a similar section that rectifies the negative half wave, and by using the differential voltage between the two capacitors, we can actually double the voltage. Or at least in theory. Let's see if that works. Okay, so the circuit is right here. Let's see if it works. First of all, let's test the positive rectifier. Okay, we have around 1 volt here. So that looks good. What about the negative one? And here we have negative 1 volt, which is great. That means we have at least 2 volts across the two. Okay, so here's the differential voltage. And let's see if we can light up an LED right now. And we can. I definitely saw a flash of light. However, it doesn't light up continuously for now. And once again, here's a close up on that. And now by slightly adjusting the tuning and the position of the antenna, I managed to get the LED light up continuously. Sort of. While we're at it, I also decided to estimate the output impedance of this circuit and also the power that it can provide to a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So to do this, I first measured the open circuit voltage and I assumed that this multimeter has an infinite input impedance, which of course it doesn't. And now the numbers have changed since I did my math and measurements. So the value that I used as an open circuit voltage was 2.7 volts. And then I connected the 10 kilo ohm resistor to the output. And I measured the voltage again. In my initial measurements, the voltage used to be 42 millivolts. And then I used an online calculator for the output impedance because I'm too lazy to do the math on paper and the result is around 632 kilo ohms. So the output impedance is huge. That's why we need some high impedance headphones to do anything with this. And I also calculated the power using P equals V squared divided by R. And the power, believe it or not, is even less than one microwatt. So, if my math is correct, the power here is around 0 0.176 microwatts. 
which is a really 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 low power. And finally I decided to calculate the loss between the transmitter and this receiver. That's because the transmitted power of this transmitter is actually public, I could find it online. And the number I found is 950 kilowatts, which I hope is ERP, which means that the ratio between the received power and the transmitted power is around 1.85 times 10 to the minus 13. So it's a ridiculously small ratio. And by doing the math in decibels, this turns out to be minus 127.31 decibels. Anyway, the fact that you can listen to the radio without external power still feels like magic to me, and the fact that I can light up an LED using the transmitted power from 20 kilometers away is also something that is as close to magic as you can get, in my opinion. And to put this into perspective, I decided to build this device to see what you can actually achieve with something that is close to those free energy devices. However, keep in mind that this is by no means free energy. And that's because whoever runs the transmitter has to pay for a huge electric bill so that I can do this experiment around 20 kilometers away. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please subscribe or follow this account because there is more content like this on the way. That's it for now. Bye.